I'm Don from Airguns of Arizona. I'm the service technician. I handle all the impacts. It's a wonderful rifle. I have one myself. There's an O-ring inside the receiver. We're going to show you in the video how to service that O-ring and the entire regulator assembly. In doing that, we just want you to know it will void your warranty, and we can tell if you were in there, believe it or not. Anyway, we'd be happy to service your rifle, so if you want to send it in, do so. However, we get a lot of requests for people wanting to do this themselves. We'll tell you the ring sizes, the Allen wrenches involved, and the procedures involved. I would definitely rate this as uh, more on the expert level repair. Accessing the O-ring that's inside the receiver is difficult. It's tricky. You want to you want to be very careful not to scratch any of the O-ring surfaces, because that's a sealing surface for the O-rings. So making you aware of all that, it does void your warranty. But uh, if you'd like to serve it yourself, here's how to do it. The tools you're going to need for this service are a very sharp awl or like a needle on the end of a dowel would work well too. The two and a half millimeter Allen wrenches are to adjust the reg and remove the trigger guard. The five millimeter ball driver is to remove the reg housing. And this is another pick that the factory uses to get behind the O-ring and pull it out. And I use these two tools to remove the O-ring that's inside the receiver. Again, that's a nine by 1.5. This is a tool we made to install the reg piston. 6.78 was to remove the rear manometer or the side manometer. The two millimeter Allen wrench and a pair of pliers, I remove the cover plate for the trigger and pull the pin out with these. And a little flashlight doesn't hurt to have in there as well. Obviously, you're gonna need some of the same tools to do the same service. Be very careful and record where your needle was on your manometer on the regulator side here on the rear of the gun. We use a digital manometer in the shop that's about $1,000 to adjust these. It, it holds a, it, it can read a tenth of a bar. So it's a very, very accurate, sensitive instrument, but you're not gonna have that available to you. So that's why I want you to take a recording on the gauge so that you have that for your reference and that was out of your gun and was set by the factory originally. So when you go ahead and adjust the reg pressure, you're gonna bring it up to just to that point again. I would start by removing the barrel. Removing the air cylinder, carbon fiber air cylinder. You're gonna have a short leak, then it's gonna stop, then finish removing it. Seven eighths, six point socket. Just release the gauge and screw the gauge. That'll release any pressure that's inside your regulator. Next, we're gonna put it in a vise. We're gonna remove the trigger guard. Two and a half millimeter Allen wrench. They're all metric, go figure. We've removed the trigger guard. Next item we need to remove is the trigger cover plate. The next item you remove is this dowel pin. That's the pivot pin for your trigger. Pay attention, this spring sits on the forward set screw and it also goes in the rear. Where there's a pocket machined right there that that spring rests in when you re reassemble it. We're gonna remove with a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench, the reg adjustment screw, the center screw right here. Next item, we'll remove the regulator housing, five millimeter Allen wrench and be careful not to lose the Belleville washers when removing this. There's gonna be, sometimes they, a couple of them stick to it because of uh, lubricant and that. Keep the gun upright so that the, reg, the rest of the regulator washers do not fall out. Next, we're gonna put it in a vise. Now, the best way to get the reg piston and the rest of the Belleville washers out is to apply a slight amount of air pressure into the regulator hole and it should pop the piston forward. You can see the piston and the washers came forward inside the receiver. Now I'm gonna take it out of the vise and basically dump it into my hand. That's the black O-ring we're going to remove. That's the internal O-ring that uh, we have issues with from time to time. And just a reminder, any of this work performed by you voids your warranty. So if you tear your rig apart, we know you've been in there and it'll void your warranty. So with that said, 
we're gonna, I go in with a very, very sharp, fine awl that's been ground, or you can make a small pick tool. And what you wanna do is you wanna, bear, I just barely touch the edge of that with my awl and get it up and push it back. Okay, you, you see where I've, I've gone in and I've just got the lip of the O-ring out and I pushed it to the rear of the hole. You want to be very careful not to scratch any of the O-ring surfaces, ceiling surfaces in there. So the next thing I do is I go in with a little hook type awl. I get behind the O-ring and I just pull it out. This is a nine by 1.5 millimeter O-ring that's 70 durometer. With the new O-ring, I, I slide the O-ring in the hole and I use just the tip of a small Allen wrench and I gently push on the bottom of the O-ring on a flat surface till it hits the bottom of the O-ring groove. And then I go in and I gently push around the sides of the O-ring till it snaps into place. There's some other ways to do it. I know the factory does it a different way, but that provide, uh, requires additional tools and uh, we're just not gonna go into those details. So with that said, I'm gonna finish installing the O-ring. I started the bottom of the O-ring at six o'clock in the bottom of the O-ring groove and I carefully moved my Allen wrench around the side of the O-ring and helped roll it into the O-ring groove. So I've left a little exposed so that you can see it and I'll finish seating the O-ring and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's completed. As you can see, I went into the Allen wrench and I just gently pushed it into position. The entire diameter circumference of the O-ring is seated in the O-ring groove. There's only one O-ring inside the receiver. The next item is your rig piston. This is your rig piston. If you notice this small little dent that's in the center of the rig piston, that means your rig has been adjusted under pressure and ruined the piston. So this is a sample of what not to have. If you have a rig piston with a dent in the end of it, it's no good, it needs to be replaced or your regulator is not gonna function properly. If you want to change an O-ring on the rig piston, and I recommend that if you have the gun apart, I take my punch, my awl, and I just pinch, I poke a hole in the O-ring and pull it away from you. Try to pinch it against your finger. You don't want to scratch the O-ring groove and remove the O-ring. And to re reverse the process with your new O-ring, I just put it on my finger and roll it around the edge and it reseats on the O-ring groove. We, we have a small tool we made to install the rig piston. It just simply slides inside the tool. We put a little light, little bit of grease on it. It's just a tool to insert the, the rig piston into the receiver and it goes in, as you can imagine, on a slight angle right there. One of the reasons we remove the trigger. And you will insert that and then you'll just give it a slight little, you'll give it a little wiggle and it'll seat. You'll feel it go in place. Okay, so the rig piston's in place. Next, next item, we have all the Belleville washers for the regulator. As you know, they're cupped. They have a dish. And you notice two of them are different colors. They're a little thinner. The last two, in the, in the order they, they go on the receiver, the cup side goes towards the piston for the last one. Okay, and I'll show you on a mandrel before I install them. So an easy way to install the Belleville washers onto the piston is to take a normal Allen wrench. As you can see, the cup is facing that direction. This cup is opposing it. Same order. Cup's facing that direction. This cup's opposing it, facing this direction. Again, for the third set. Again, for the fourth set. The last silver heavy Belleville washer cup will be facing to the left. The first black Belleville washer, which is thinner, will be opposing it. So there'll be two cups opposing each other. And the very last one, the black thin one, will be the couple facing again left. And what I do is I take the Allen wrench and I put, hold it on my fingers like this and I'll go in and I'll set it on the end of the rig piston 
at the angle in which it sits and release the washers so that they fall under the rig piston. Here, we'll give you an example here. This is what'll happen. Okay, now how I work this is the piston's already in the receiver. I'll take the Allen wrench, I'll set it on the end of the piston and l gently let them slide over the end and you can wiggle that around. You wanna make sure they're all down on the piston like that. The next item is the piston housing. The, it retains everything. There's a four by one and a half O-ring on the inside of that. I recommend you replace that. That seals against the end of the piston. So that's what the regulator assembly looks like that's inside the receiver when it's assembled. All right, so let's go ahead and remove this. Verify my order's correct, which it is. And I'm going to install these into the receiver. I'm gonna release the Velvet washers and then you'll just give it a slight little, you'll give it a little wiggle and it'll see, and they're all on the right piston. The next item we reinstall is a regulator housing. I put a small bit of grease on the face of that with your five millimeter wrench. And with just light finger pressure, you're gonna turn this in and you're not gonna crank on this. You're just gonna slowly screw it in until it stops and just, just slightly snug. There's not much pressure on it at all, just slightly snug and that's all it's gonna take for that to seal. If you over tighten it, you can damage things. The next item we reinstall that are in the rig adjusting screw, these are uh, two by one millimeter O-rings. Uh, if you have it apart, you might as well replace them. The surface should be clean and polished and I don't recommend touching that up because uh, you can ruin it. <laughs> so just make sure it's clean and then we'll take and put a little bit of grease again on the O-rings, insert the adjusting screw. And again, with just light finger pressure, you're gonna turn this in until you feel it's just touched the piston. Do not force it past there or you ruin your piston. It stopped, okay? Back at a, about a half a turn. And now we're ready to put the manometer back in the rear of the rifle. So we're gonna reinstall your manometer that reads your regulator pressure. I'm just careful not to let the socket touch the receiver so it doesn't mar the finish and make that snug. Next, we'll reinstall the carbon fiber tank and the trigger group. As you can see, your pivot pin is right here. This spring is gonna go into a little pocket that's in the, the bottom of the cocking block. It should be very easy assembly. As you can see, the front of the little Pac-Man figure, uh, which is your sear, is on the front of the cocking block. Push your pin in to the hole. And there and there we have it. The pin is installed. So you should be able to cock and release the trigger. I'm holding the cocking handle on the other side by the way so it doesn't snap forward. Now the next thing you will do is I turn it to minimum power and I install the barrel. Lock the barrel in place. We're gonna go ahead and pressurize the rifle. So as you can see, we're about a half a turn out and it looks to be about 75 bar. So when you go ahead and adjust the rig pressure like we're gonna do now, you're gonna bring it up to the point it was when we removed the manometer. So with the two and a half millimeter Allen wrench, we're gonna slowly unscrew, which is counterclockwise, the rig adjustment screw. We're up at right now at about two turns and what I'm gonna do, the gun is cock the gun, close the bolt, obviously have it in a safe direction, make sure it's unloaded, and we're gonna fire the gun. Okay, so we've uh, adjusted the manometer to just slightly below 150 bar. We have just a small bit to go, and I'm gonna give it about an eighth of a turn slowly. You can see the needle move. We're gonna cock and fire the gun again. Now, it's, the rifle is settling in to the point it was when we removed the manometer. The last item is to reinstall the trigger guard. It makes it a little easier if you back the screw off in the grip, which is again a five millimeter. So I back the grip screw off slightly, make this sure that your sides of your trigger guard are aligned with a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench. Run your screws in, just snug them up a little bit. 
tighten up your grip. The last item we'll replace is the side cover plate for the trigger. Just light tension is all you need for those as well. Your gun originally was tuned from the factory with 30 caliber, uh, a 30 caliber barrel for maximum velocity, which you'll find it does that well with all the calibers from 25 to 22 and now available are 177 barrels. I find with my personal rifle that on maximum 30 caliber, you get the best performance. It's gonna be a 44 grain pellet at about uh, 860 to 870 feet per second. The, tw the 25 caliber, if you'll turn it from maximum down to setting three or four, you're probably gonna find that it's gonna shoot just as fast there as it did at maximum, you're gonna waste less air. So you're gonna get more shots. Uh, with the 22, I end up down around two with my rifle and I get uh, a little over 100 shots with a 22 caliber and a 16 grain pellet doing about 930. So great performance, a lot of shots. It's a wonderful setup. Well, that completes our rig installation, uh, re-o-ringing it and resurfacing the regulator. If you need any parts, call us at Air Guns of Arizona. Getting into the regulator system at all, again, avoids your warranty. So if you can avoid it, do so, send it to us. We'll be happy to repair it. They're a wonderful product. You'll get a lot of service out of it, enjoyment, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.